Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. We are starting a series on Linux tutorials. We would be covering topics from basics to some advanced features of Linux in the coming days. Today's topic is introduction to Linux. But before we start, please subscribe to our YouTube ch channel in case you have not so that you don't miss the upcoming session. So let's get started with the today's session. So this is what we would be covering today. The history of Linux, flavors of Linux, advantages and disadvantages of Linux, Linux directory structure, what is kernel and the boot structure. History of Linux. Now the history is pretty interesting. In 1991, Linus Torvalds, a student at the University of Helsinki, Finland, started writing its own code. Uh, he thought to have a freely available academic version of Unix. And that is the reason mainly he started to write his own code. Now later, this became uh, the Linux kernel. He wrote this program specially for his own PC as he wanted to use a uh, Unix 386 Intel computer, but he really couldn't afford it. He did it on the Minix using the GNUC compiler. GNUC compiler is still the main choice of compiled Linux code, by the way but the other compilers are also used like the Intel C compiler. Now he started this project just for the fun, but ended up with such a large project, which almost, you know, Linux is being used at every corner of the world. Now about the naming, firstly, he wanted to name it as Frex, but later it become, it, it became Linux. Now he published the Linux kernel under his own, own license and was restricted to use as commercially. Linux uses most of its tool from the GNU software and are under GNU copyright. In 1992, he released the kernel under GNU public license. Flavors of Linux. Now, what are the flavors of Linux? There are, there are actually a lot of flavors available currently in the market. You could download it. You could use it according to your way. You could, uh, you know, modify according according to your needs. But these are some of the uh, commonly used flavors in, in, in Linux uh, around the world. Red Hat, CentOS, Rocky Linux, which is mainly started as, as a replacement of CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, Debian, OpenSUSE, Mandriva, Gentoo, and Kali Linux. Now coming to the advantages of Linux, uh, these are just the few advantages. Uh, th th there are a lot of uh, the advantages, but uh, I thought let's, let's discuss the important ones. Now, first is open source. As it is open source, its source code is easily available. Anyone having pro programming knowledge can customize the operating system according to his needs the way he wants. One can contribute, modify, distribute, and enhance the code for any purpose as well. Second is security. The Linux security feature is the main reason that is most favorable op option for the developers. It is not completely safe, but yeah, I mean, at the same time, it's less vulnerable than others as well. Each applications each application needs to authorize by the admin user. The virus is not executed until the administrator provides the access password. Linux systems do not require any antivirus program. And that is the main reason that if, if, uh, if any organization is thinking from a security point of view, Linux is the most favored operating system. Next is free. Certainly the biggest advantage of Linux system is that it is free to use. I mean, it's, it's one of the major cost cutting tool for any organization. So we can easily download it and there is no need to buy the license for it as well. Next is stability. Linux is more stable than any of the operating systems. Linux, Linux does not require, require reboot to the, the Linux does not require to reboot the system for any kind of maintenance purpose, be it your updating packages, applying patch or any of the thing. It really hangs or slow down and it has big uptimes. Next is performance. 
Linux system provides high performance over different networks. It is capable of handling a large number of users simultaneously, which is again the next advantage is multitasking. It is a multitasking operating system, meaning it, it can run multiple tasks simultaneously without affecting the system speed. Now at the same time, Linux does have some disadvantages as well. A few of them are adaptation. So Linux is a bit technical in nature. Okay, so for people who are less expertise in computers, it can be hard to understand Linux. Uh, I have mainly seen the, uh, the the engineers who are kind of habitual to Windows operating system. Uh, they kind of face uh, some some issues, you know, when ab adapting to the Linux systems because they are not used to the CLA or the interface uh, Linux provides. <coughs> Now, most users find it difficult to adapt to Linux due to its terminals used. Uh, though, so the terminals are mainly the command line interface where you need to enter specific command in order to complete task. Next one is software compatibility. Now, popular applications which are made for Windows are, or Mac are not available for Linux. Uh, so they Many developers are actually not interested in making software for Linux due to its small market value because it's free, it's GNU. So that is the reason people uh, do not find it monetarily benefiting them. So then, so they uh, don't make it. Now, one of the example is MS Office, iTunes or Photoshop. Even though there are alternative to these softwares, these cannot match to the original level as well. Next one is gaming. Uh, similar to software, games do uh, too doesn't natively support Linux because Linux is not a platform which is which is widely used for game by gaming developers or gaming developers are not much interested in Linux. The next one is hardware compatibility. Uh, almost all hardwares in uh, today's uh, Linux can can be connected. I mean, can be used. So earlier, th there there were we used to find issues with uh, hardware compatibility, like we had to you know carry specific drivers to install on on any of the operating uh, on on any of the Linux flavors. But yeah, I mean, there are still few hardwares. Those are like you know, still not compatible uh, with the with the Linux operating systems. Uh, next one is vulnerable to attacks through buggy packages. I mean, similar in, in contradictory to what we saw in the advantages where all the packages was were, were available. Now, if any of those packages are, say, you know, have a security loophole or anyone could uh, execute uh, a, a shell script and gain access, uh, that, that, can, that can be very fatal for any organization. So these are some of the disadvantages. Now, Linux directory structure. Now, what is the Linux directory structure? The base of the Linux file system is root. I mean, it, it starts with root. Root is denoted by slash and everything it starts with, it's with the root directory. Uh, common top level directories are slash. Slash is again the root directory that forms the base of the file system bin uh, bin contains the executable programs that are part of Linux operating system. So many Linux commands, which we would be covering in the upcoming sessions, like cat, cp, or in all, all or any common commands are are located in the bin. Etc contains most system configuration files and the initialization scripts. Slash home is an home directory conventional location for the home directories of all the users. Users by default log into this directory. For example, if I create a user, see so user one, the home directory would be slash home slash user one. TMP is a temporary directory that any user can use as uh, as a scratch directory basically, meaning that the contents of the directory are not considered important and are usually deleted every time whenever the system boots. OPT, OPT is an optional or third party 
software directory where you can install any of the third party package that 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 you downloaded for example you downloaded specific utility for yourself so you can enter it under opt and install it slash usr so user related programs contains the subdirectories for many important programs such as the ui and the online manual as well slash var contains various system files such as logs as well as directories for holding other informations such as files for web servers and ftp servers lib it contains kernel modules and containing library files including the loadable driver modules which are needed to boot the system as been has been our binary executable programs for an S administrator now it contains executable files representing commands typically used for system administration tasks now there are certain system admin commands like mount or unmount or halt or shutdown they they all reside in the asbin directory now there are few other directories as well which are uh, probably not which which you may not encounter in in your daily usage but i mean they they do exist for example slash boot it contains all the boot related information slash dev it contains all the devices uh, information lost lost plus found you would find this in every every directory that that you create then we have slash media mnt proc proc is an important from a system uh, point of view it is it is a virtual and pseudo file system to contain info about all the running processes with a specific process id or pid so we would again see all, all, all the process related information in the upcoming sessions slash run slash srv and slash sys i mean they they are hardly used i mean you you will not require to log into or go to these directories for any of these tasks so i mean this is just for your information you can check this okay uh, moving to next what is kernel now kernel kernel is a special piece of code you know which is a core component of linux it is actually the main component of a linux and is the core interface between the hardware and software it basically communicates between the two managing resources as efficiently as possible the kernel is so named because you know like a seed inside a hard shell it exists within the os and control all the major functions of the hardware whether it's phone laptop server or any kind of computer now this is just a graphical representation of how how a kernel would interact for example you would see process 1 process 2 process 3 so i mean you can you can just you know replace it with say you are running an applications and these are the three applications so the application is not directly contacting the hardware or is not connected to the hardware directly kernel is the is is the is in the middle tier here kernel is responsible for you know getting all the details from the process uh, say the application and connecting with the with it with the hardware and then responding back so that's that's what the kernel would do now the kernel has fourly main uh, main jobs memory management which keeps a track of how much memory is used to store what and where process management determine which processes can use the centralized processing when and for how long device drivers act as a mediator inter interpreter between the hardware process the, the the one we discussed now and systems call and security which is like receiving request for service from the processes so this was very basic information about about the linux kernel here next is boot process now what is the boot process so whenever whenever uh, a laptop a linux system starts it has to go through a certain process now if you if you have seen it you would see some commands loading while while the linux is getting started right now what is the boot process there are mainly six stages in in this boot process any of the boot any of any of these stages 
uh, encounters any error due to whatever reason, uh, the boot would fail. The your, your Linux system will not boot. Now, the first one start with the BIOS. Okay, BIOS is basic input out, output system. Uh, it executes MBR. Uh, BIOS also does some health checks to the system and the bootloader program searches loads and executes and then we move to the next stage that is MBR. MBR is the master boot record. It is generally located at the first sector of the bootable disk. Now it is usually dev HDA or dev SDA. Master boot record executes the grub which is the loader. Grub stands for Grand Unified Bootloader which in turn executes the kernel. Now if you have multiple kernels installed on your system, Grubs give you an option to either select a default one or you give a, get a choice when you are starting your Linux system to select a specific kernel. Now the four stage kernel, kernel executes as been in it. Now kernel boot process, basically what happens is the, the file mounts the root system according to what is specified against the root in the grub.con file. So we have a specific ADC grub.con file and kernel runs the program as been in it. Now since init was the first program to run by kernel Linux, it has been the number one process ID or PID number one. You would see the process command uh, and grep in it where, where you can check the PID. Now after that, the fifth stage, which is in it, in it executes the run level programs. In it examines the etc in it files to decide on which run level I want to go. Okay, run level is again like there are six run levels in, in Linux 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, just, just for you know the basic information on, on this, uh, in majority of, of the uh, cases, 3 is, is what the running run level is used. 3 is the command line interface. Now, in it executes that run level progr uh, program. It, it identifies, okay, whatever run level have been set, I need to, you know, load all those programs which are set for this particular run level. Now, the sixth and final stage, how how would it recognize whether you know which which run levels which uh, programs to load according to the run level it would go into this file etc rc.d rc star is rc run level 1 so so if my run level is 3 it would be rc3.d and under that it will have the links or the programs which which the kernel should be loading or starting up so this is these these are the main six level of of uh, six stages of the boot process that linux follows when it starts okay uh, that's all we had for today uh, i hope you had a great learning sessions do comment uh, on this video and let us know your feedback and thank you for watching this video bye